Welcome to another episode of Big Evil Media. Got another special guest, goes by the name of Cap Stacks. How are you today, bro? Yeah, it was good, man. Yeah, I'm cool, man. Yeah, how, how's the journey down? It was all right. It was okay. It was okay. It's a bit of a myth, man. A lot of geography changed than that. I hear that. I hear that. So, as we always do with all our guests, we go from the very beginning. Let us know uh, where you're from. Where did you grow up? Okay, so I'm from a place called Newham, a borough called Newham. Um, and I grew up there as well. So, I grew up in a place called like Cannon Town, Custom Mouse. Okay. Burton East Dam. I just I'm just naming all the places that I've 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 lived in with my parents. Okay, where, where, where are your parents from? Um, Congo. Okay, okay. There's a, there's a big um, Congolese community that grew up in that area. <laughs> I love it still. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was good. Do you remember that like, growing up and meeting all the other Congolese, the Tontons, the Tantins, and knowing everyone locally? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not gonna lie. It was like um, extended family in it in a way like until you kind of like yeah, of age to kind of like know better so mm. i'm there like i'm living on an estate and i've got like thousands of cousins or something like that or thousands of relatives or something but it's just all come from just the it takes a village to raise a child mentality yeah so i mean tell us about, about your upbringing you got your mom your dad siblings so i grew up with my mom my dad, yeah, was like, it was from a distance because they separated. I was born to a young mum, like, I think like 16 or something, 17. Oh, she had you when she was 16, 17? Yeah, a little girl still. Mm. Um, and my dad, he was older. I think he was like 24. I don't know what my dad was on still. Okay. But, they, you know, Congolese, it was like different eras, different generations. And uh, were you born in London? Me? Nah. Mm. Like I was born, I was born back. I was born outside the country, still back home, and I, and then I came here at a young age. Okay, okay. So when you came here to, to London, so you lived with just your mom at the time. Um, yeah, I lived with my mom. In fact, like we lived all over Newham. Yeah, so from the get go, like we was living in France at first, before we made our our little country here. I think, I I think at some stage things went sour with my old man and her. And then, yeah, we ended up here in Newham. Is it, did it ever affect you not having your father around, do you think? Yeah, but it was, it's in retrospect, it's, it's more like, it's, it's more visible now. It's more like, um, it's, I'm more aware of it as I've, as I've moved on in life. Yeah. It wasn't like as, 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 as deep then. It was just, um, yeah, he's gone. And then you just do this like instinctive, acts and that that come from that 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 void or that that kind of trauma to that situation him going or him not being around or yeah. how, how, how did your mom cope as a young mother having to deal with bringing up a young man in london well she like i said she wasn't short-handed she wasn't like um without help or without aid they took like a village to raise me yeah. literally there was a lot of like people that passed through and helped her like counseled me spoke to me whatever not i can say yeah and what was your kind of early ambitions and dream what did you want to be um what did i want to be mm. when i was younger i used to tell everyone that my dad was an airplane attendant okay and that's why he wasn't around and i would be um like that one day same okay yeah but really and truly i was drawing I was behind my door, like I can draw really well, I could paint really well. Mm. Yeah, so that was really my thing in it, like anything creative. Okay, I've had quite a few now different um, guests who have come here and they've said that like, drawing, painting, and designing thing was something that they wanted to do and something that they was good at. Why do you think um, sort of many young black men don't kind of pursue that? Um, you know what? I'm I'm not gonna blame the parents in it, but I'm gonna blame like generational like I'm not gonna say for the C word out there in it, but generational like mindsets in it that mm. that allowed like that generation to feel like there isn't a future in like such activities or there isn't um no fruits to be gained from 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 planting even those seeds. So when I was drawing those pictures, I I was bringing them back to 
like anyone older than me, especially anyone from back home or anything like that, on the fridge or something like that, it would get the, oh, who drew this kind of thing? Yeah, young man drew it, but it wouldn't get the, like, say if I was banging bull, like, you know what I'm trying to say? I'm going to check my cousins, the cage was there, people banging bull, like, people literally getting their pocket money thrown at them, trainings paid for, mm. whatever, but there was nothing like that for those outlets there. No, I definitely hear that. And how was you kind of in school, education-wise? Was you pretty decent? Did you struggle a bit? Um, I had a thing, because obviously English wasn't my first language, I had, like, a thing for just, like, conquering, like, again, just anything creating, like, so... Like, I came to this place, I didn't know how to speak English. Um, but I, I took it as a challenge. Like, you know when you get teased for saying good afternoon? My, my thing was, like, some German way. Like, mm-hmm. I'm saying good afternoon. I, I couldn't get rid of the <laughs> French. You know the, the French? The yeah, yeah, you get, yeah. I've got that. And I'm saying, like, yeah, good afternoon, like that. They're mocking it. And I'm like, all right, my head watch, man. I'm going to pattern up English. And I'm going to learn it. Same way, like, I learned how to draw the Goku in him. And they're like... So I did. I learned it within three to six months. My mom was shocked. Okay, okay. And um, so you're living in Newham. How much did you remember about Newham as a young man? Um, I remember Newham like like mini Congo, man. The big man thing. I just remember it of this extension of outside, minus the parents, though. Like, like you get what is what is it like to be like from. I feel like a lot of boroughs then, like, you know, because we used to do the 50 man riding like to different areas or yeah. on the bikes and stuff like that. And when we're touring, we're noticing the, the difference of demographics around there. And, that, and there's not many, like, Congolese people. There's not many Africans in general. In some areas, boroughs might be more Caribbean or Yardies or more this or more Polish or more whatever it was. But when we was back there, it was an extension of me leaving my house, I felt. Mm. Yeah, and if it wasn't, it was just a, a taste of the anyone that hasn't been back to Africa. Like the market's not far, yeah. the church is not far, the you get after school clubs is not far. Even there, they might get. It's not sh- common shock then for a man to a uh, a uh, uh, Mundela to know what Taba is over there. Like yeah. you, you get, they know what Dombolo is like, <laughs> like like the white people running in ends and that. Yeah. Uh, what school did you go to? Um, Road Dogs. Road Dogs. So at which point would you say sort of life started changing for you where you started getting your first taste of the roads? Um, do you know what? I would say it was it was it was like when like my old man left, it was me trying to like find out what masculinity was about. Do you mm. get like we trying to like that journey because it was lacking. It was um I had to I had to look outwards a lot, you understand, because it wasn't there. So when, with my mom, um, obviously she couldn't stay single forever. This girl mm. was seventeen. Let's be honest, sixteen. Like if he goes, like she's got her life ahead of her, yeah. and naturally nature took its course. And I had like someone, um, a stepdad, which is now obviously father to my sister. But at the time, it was like an intruder. It was my first taste of fighting for territory. Mm. You understand? So that was my first taste of, of, of wanting to reclaim power or wanting to, or, 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 or being aware of a power struggle. Oh, okay, I'm in the house and so for suddenly I don't feel as safe no more. Suddenly I don't feel as in charge of my mom's safety or something or my sibling's safety, yeah. which I felt like I, I, I put myself in that role subconsciously yeah. when he went, my dad. Okay. So, and, and that's what you say, kind of navigate you towards the roads and you're seeking affirmation. Yeah. There. When I couldn't win against, like, my, my step pops and stuff like that, I found, I, I, I had to find ways of of winning or keeping those Ws to myself, which is now kind of, like, bottling and I'm self-imploding. I'm bringing it out on the street now because no one really knows that I get grounded or I get beat or anything like mm-hmm. that because I'm bottling it up with all these robberies and stabbings, whatever or not, what's mm-hmm. going on. So, uh, so when did it really, really get real for you? When, when was your first piece of activities that you were doing that you said, okay, um, like w- every young man kind of dabbles at the beginning, but then there's a point where there's that whole transition where things change. Um, I would say, I would say yeah, that um, when well, it was a time when I ran away from home, to be honest. Yeah. I remember this kind of clearly. This is when I, I could, my first, in, that's why I can, my first taste of like, of what was to come. Um, I had these girl cousins 
in the area local to us. So if I went to school in Royal Docks, then Britannia and all those areas was literally a stone's from away. Like it's where the XO is and all that. Yeah. So we've got a little party going on there, a little house party. And we've gone there. I think we've gone there in like 10 of us. Like, And obviously, you know, there's the girls from our school. There might be some girls from the girl, all girls school that is just down the road, but it's like down Stratford or something. Yeah. But Stratford girls are like, they all get GE'd out by the the, 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 the bonds lot. Like the boys, there's like a boys school that literally is across them or something, yeah. you know? I It's so deep, like I was so far down Prince Regent Lane that I didn't used to go down to see it like that unless I was going shopping with my mom. So I just heard there's a girls school down there and there's bare girls, you know? So we've gone there to this motive. I've already seen black girls from my area or my school. I'm gone down there with, with the man them. And I'm drawing this girl. She's from like that area or something like that. Cut a long story short, you've got a group of boys that that basically frequent them girls. The same way we know the girls from our area at that party, but we're not really, you get it, it's like we know them, we're trying to move away and do our dot elsewhere. Some of us got girlfriends there in that school and we're trying to like have girlfriends in other schools now, you get it, childhood and all that. So you've got some dominant people that want to fight for other girls or you get it all, that's what it was, let's be honest, man. It wasn't long until you get approached like, yo, like, what's going on or why are you doing here or something like that. And I'm thinking like, yo, we don't know you. I don't know you. We don't go to the same school. We're not even from the same part of the borough or something. Your only issue could like could be like, is since I've spoken to this beanie here, you know? So you're saying a lot of the kind of the issue, because people, people hide away from like that. A lot of issues that start from road, it normally starts from school days over someone's dating a girl mm -hmm. or other people like this girl and this girl's interested in, other, in another group from a different area. So that's what you're kind of I'm getting at. They've said it, man. Don't, like, yeah, like, don't do it, man. <laughs> but it's crazy, yeah, a lot of it. Like, I'll, if it's just if you can be honest enough, like, like, who was around at the time? Who was you? Like, how did you feel, like, in your social status at the time? Like, who was getting the girls at the time, if you look at it, like, or... You know, was it like, was you confident in being yourself at the time? If you can answer those questions, then yeah, it wasn't for that. You know, but a lot of us didn't know ourselves. So we used to give ourselves battles like to win or to overcome when there wasn't any, man. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, there will always be, there will always be the playground, there will always be there. So when I've gone and I'm in that, that, that party and I'm speaking to that, that beanie and I've had this guy approach, man, I I get straight to the point. I've always been like that. Like, yo, you boy, what's wrong with you? Why is it over a girl, bro? Or you're, and that can touch a man, mm -hmm. you know, like to be put under the spotlight like that. And if you're not over yourself, you're not understanding, yeah, at that point, which a lot of us wasn't. We're just kids. We're, we're all under like 18, let's be honest. Um, yeah, so he's on some, what, like, what? You talking about like what would you mean like over over this and that over that and this, yeah next minute you know like people from my group are coming to see what the the, the smoke is and people from their group are coming to see what the smoke is and it spills outside because it's obviously a house party this is someone's parents' house like we're children yeah. let's be honest like that lights kit turn on on ease and uncles are up and that like you're being a booby man like get out so we've mm -hmm. all come out and then next minute. Yeah, our groups head off of each other. Now, by then, let's be, uh, if I be honest to myself, I wasn't fully entrenched in it. So, because when it got real, like, obviously, like, I, like it's me that's actually the, 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 that was the, the target in that, in that situation there. But um, I realized that I wasn't, I wasn't, I was confused. This was new to me. You understand? Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm playing now. I'm, I'm even running away from home and stuff like that. But, we're stealing Beyblades, like, we're still, at the same time that we on the same day we might have gone to a train and robbed a couple of phones or something, I might, I'm just as likely to go and pick up my little sister from school yeah. in that same day and um, go and, 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 and play with my little, like, Chinese friend next door to my house after, because I'm not allowed out, I'm still going through life, like, yeah. but, but people think I'm some, like, outside because I've, you know, some guy that, you get, all I try to make myself is someone that couldn't get their phone jacked. Like, I just mm. saw people get too much robberies, too much, like, and then there was a death early, like, in, um, that I wasn't, I didn't even know about. Oh, now I don't know what was he died, but, like, mm. do you know, but it's like, I used to run away from pain. I used to run away from traumatic pain. I'm talking about mental, I'm talking about my dad. I'm talking about 
anything stepdad i'm talking about anything it just stays that way or i found it and i go and create a new thing like with the violence with the that and then when i found myself in that that party and they were staring me in the face it was either become it or leave it you understand luckily that day i was saved by my friends like they came like yo like you, you can't touch him and it was always it was, it was one of them ones yeah. yeah i had a popular friend he squashed it that day i go away but it was, it was bad blood from then this is me personally and so it's a, it's a, it's a, it's so, so that people understand, are you talking about kind of like the new and beef? How yeah, kind of like, yeah, because like I've I've seen a couple of the things and whatever not, and I can agree. It's it was there's been sets, you understand from from early. You, you've got one, you've got sides or whatever not. People call it whatever not now. Cause I've been like I've been involved in it without my without my my choice. Like mm -hmm. you get, what I'm trying to say I've been. Uh, uh, I've been, I've been, I've been like, I've had, I've, I've seen ramifications of it through without wanting to see it, like without going to look for it. You know, all I know is that my mom moved to this area when she came to this country with me and I've grown up here and things have happened here and since my, 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 my incarceration, you understand? Because I went to jail over this stuff and I went to jail over having to meet that energy that was placed on me at that party. I mean, so, I'm just going to break it down. So, obviously, for people, the viewers that don't know, there's a sort of kind of an e e eternal war that's happening in Newham that's been ongoing for the last maybe 15 years. And it's for the south side of Newham, which consists of um, Custom House, Canning Town, um, East Ham, and Beckton, right? And, like I said, North Woolwich. And then south side, so the north side, which will consist of say Beckton, Plast, or Stratford, uh, Manor Park, I'm not sure, but they all kind of had this kind of separation. And what you're kind of breaking down is that before even the death that happened, that kind of made it go to another scale, there's always a bit of tension brewing, and it's then from the party that you guys went to over girls. Um, I won't say it stem from from that locally, but just look at the geography of Newham. I don't know if we're gonna have to get a map up alongside this screen or whatever or not. But like, if you look up the way Newham is, yeah, and how it, it 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 it's just based. It's literally split. Like, and no wonder that they call it what it's called now, and that and the polarity between it. It's it's always been like that. There's one long road that literally starts it called Barking Road. Like, mm. and I went to school on one side of it. Yeah. And it was a long road that led to the other side of that. And that's all it was, the geography of it. So if you went to school down this area, you have your own shopping centers around this area, you have your own this and that around this area, there's really mu not much need to do go there. So when we did, you know, like for markets or for, for mummy or for to go linkage or something like that, it was literally like, like, like play days out. We have six week holidays, we're in like, ends that that are now or like no go ends for maybe my little brothers and sisters or something you understand but we was there and i i know you know what i'm trying to say so we was there no. but so when problems happened they would happen because of territorial thing it would happen because of of like yo who are these people like sometimes you might have too much ego on a man's mm. block you understand you're just you're there like you you're, you're from here you're in strategy you know but you, you you're jacking phones there or your name is ringing or this and that so you have end up having an altercation or because you you think you're doing dirt away from your area, which was what I was doing. I'm thinking I could just take this guy's shit. I could stay in this pack from here. I can do this and that from here and just, and I'm going back to my area. Mm -hmm. You understand? So a lot of people didn't like me for those reasons. You know, you can kind of, you know, yeah. So it was like that. I felt like I don't see them as much. So I'm less, I'm less likely to see them again. And whatever not but every time we did see each other now now they've got more yeah you know i'm trying to say they're yeah. rushing you in groups and now it becomes like we don't like this group and we don't like that groups and that yeah. but what i will say on 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 that situation there is like um i'm lucky enough to have gone to to prison which i'll touch on at some point mm -hmm. before um all of this took off in my bar you know where i came from because it was literally within um it was a week after my birthday, like, I feel like the first, like, attack started happening between, like, both factions and stuff like that, mm. you know? So, and I was already, like, eight months into my, my remand by then, yeah. you know? So, it wasn't, it wasn't um, a good, a good time. But I'm lucky to have gone before it because I can say to a lot of people that 
my issue with people was never because they was from like this area. Yeah. You're from like you get I'm from the six or something, you're from there, I'm on to you. No, it wasn't like that. It was I thought I could get away with playing out and my parents not hearing about me and my bullshit that I get up to if I'm going over there on that side of the borough and doing nonsense. You understand? And then when I started realizing that um, it was a small world out there, I started to move outside to more Essex parking and all of these kind of areas. Yeah. And like, so I was literally everywhere. Like, you know, I was doing it everywhere. I was in, in two, my name became hot in that area for robbing or too much to, nonsense like that. I'll go to a different area and start doing it there. Mm. Like that. I was just saw it as playing out fun. Yeah, I mean, so, so not to kind of dwell into what you're saying, because of how active you were in different boroughs and different areas at the time, that's what led you to get shot? Um, yeah, because there's not just the what's it called. Like, I feel like you have to reinforce it, innit? I grew up, like, school days, a lot of grime was going on. A lot of a lot of happy slaps was literally going on. Let's be, I, I was there them days, like, mm. as well. Like, people was literally getting slapped for entertainment. <laughs> and I'm witnessing this stuff. I just thought, like, it's like a crazy doggy dog world out here. Like, I've come from, like, you know, Congo, like, I've come from France, like, it's meant to be a country of love and shit like mm. that, and I'm coming in, I'm seeing with this kind of stuff there, people, the way, the nice guys, the guys that do the art, the guys that do the, 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 the running off the school in Macmillan yeah. Stadium, you get, it? like, the guys that was doing those, those seem to be losing, like, their prizes, their girls, their, their life sometimes, and I was too observant for it, because I had to be observant to be able to draw, to take in so much, yeah. you know, so, I'm seeing it and I realized the common pattern and I just didn't want to be part of it, especially when Happy Slaps was coming out. Like, yeah. I'm seeing people that were so-called bad boys getting it and, and I'm starting to do it to people as well now. So mm. the more buzz I was getting off these little things and that, yeah, I never liked it. I didn't like all of that, that kind of stuff. That I just moved to a different area and just started knowing them a bit. Yeah. And music-wise, was you kind of making music at the time? Yeah, but it wasn't, I wasn't like, I wasn't taking it serious like, because... Um, when I say like I was in school, there was a lot of people that, that like I went to school with that was like, um, they was doing all of that kind of stuff. And if they wasn't doing it in my school, they was doing it in like in the area. There's a lot of like music and talent that's come out of Newham. And I grew up, I was on Kano. I was on all of them kind of like more technical side of things. I like storytelling. Mm -hmm. Even like my, my art that I talk about is... It's storytelling. It's a way of me explaining whatever it was that was going on up here cognitively. So I I put a lot of effort into in, into into it. Once like someone told me, yeah, you can spit, but it wasn't on purpose. It just came from like mimicking another popular rapper. Mm. And you know, it was a lot of eight bars. You got yeah. the rap flow. The, I'm saying it on time or something. I was like, I didn't need to get taught what eight bar is or something. Yeah. I just realized the pattern for it. And, and was you just doing gram at the time? Did you do hip hop as well, and rapping? Um, I was doing like everything that was popular. Like I didn't. I was spinning over dancehall beats, which wasn't really like, like not like. Um, it wasn't really popular at the time. Hmm. Okay, I hear that. So it led to a point that where you eventually went to prison, and you went to prison for a long time. Talk us through that. Possession with intent um, and drugs. And, and how long did you get? I got just under 10 IPP. IPP? Yeah. Damn. So you're one of the last people to get IPP. I mean, for you to get IPP, they must have seen you as a danger to society at the time. So what was you kind of keeping up on roles? And did you, think that, did, you, did you think the IPP was warranted? Did I think the IPP was warranted? I... I don't think the... If you look at the actions that you were doing on the roads. In calm, like, if there was, like, a, a thing called karma, I'm, like, I, I'm, I'm not really effing with it, but it, it would be for the things that maybe I, 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 I didn't go down for or I didn't, what's it called? It was, it was a, it's an energy that builds up, man. It's like, if it's not going to be that, it's that, in it? Like, and I was, yeah, not guilty of those ones, but... I was guilty of, of yeah, of oh, other shit. So, when the judge has said ten years IPP, did you cry? I mean, even when you went to prison for the first time, did you cry? 
did I cry? I didn't cry because I was master of bottling things back then. Like, yeah. So like my emotions and that was, was buried from, from, from like when I couldn't answer something, you know what I mean? That's, I like to answer and get active in silence and that. So I couldn't, I couldn't answer like a lot of things. So, when you hit in your IPP, how are you feeling? I'm I'm feeling like, what is this for starters? You get it. I remember like literally having a half an hour debate with my solicitor about what it is in it because not everyone got it in it. Mm. It's just like me. Like I'm thinking, why? Why did? And then my solicitor is like, yo, it's like a life sentence. It's this and that. You get it, and then that's when it kind of hit, man, in it. Then I realized my soul, my not my soldier, my my solicitor is a is a felon, really. So we kind of attacked my man, in it. That was just me hurting over, mm. or hurting over what happened, and the jailers as well. I proper misbehaved during that that week there. It kind of when it woke up, it woke me up, in it. it it's like this is what happens when you're the first one in it, when you always mm. want to be the one to. Do you know what I mean to misbehave? Because so when you say attacked, did you mean like you physically attacked your sister? On point, a hundred. Because you thought that he'd done your day. Yeah, because I didn't. It's like really and truly is the revelation of you fucked up. You did this, like, mm. and that's hard to. That was hard to take. Like, I had to blame someone. I looked at him. I said, "It's you, bro." And I just said, <laughs> <"You get laughs> I should have been laughing for that. I should be laughing. I'm sorry. Did, did you did you get extra charges for that? Yeah. The solicitor for charges. The solicitor did and the jailers did. Okay, well, I mean, yeah. So that, that for, for, for the judge, then he's speaking and see that, look, you see it, I justified it, this is why I gave it to him. Um, It didn't make it easier on my first, appro my first um application for parole. Mm. I mean, let's talk about prison then. How did you spend your time in prison? Like, you, you're there for a long time. You end up doing, what, 14 years? Just under, yeah. But just, yeah, 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 it's around 14. I like to just, yeah. yeah. I mean, how, how, what, was, what was the toughest part about being in prison? The toughest part about being in prison was is just the revelations, the cliches that you used to get told of like when you're in the household, when you're when you're growing up and that like you start realizing that and realizing that not everyone was your enemy. Mm. Do you know? But I I got taught to be so vigilant, so because my experiences teach me nothing but to be more vigilant or diligent for the next mm. episode. Do you know? So and I always had that mentality of there will be a next episode. So, you know, like if you keep thinking like that, I personally think like you can just start like, you know, just on a deal or just a, like attracting it, mm. you know, like, because if you're thinking like, you know what, I'm, I'm kicked out of school. I'm, I'm not going to college. I've got, a, I'm, I'm on bail for a case. Um, and you already, already for you to even be in that gang um, life, I feel like you've already taken the road of thinking that, um, me personally, that there isn't nothing else. You understand? Like, like you're good at this. I felt like whatever I was good at, with the fast money, I literally had this, the kid's mind of, I could do this for a long time. I yeah. could, I could, yeah, from time I bought, like, my first piece of weaponry off of things I've stolen, or things I've taken from people, or we bought our first car, in my head, my mom was 17 and I'm now that age, mm. you know, and I, oh, we bought a car for stolen money and mm. maybe I can keep on stealing, yeah. you get it. Or maybe I could keep on robbing or I could keep on burning bridges and it wasn't like that. Joe woke me up to that and it, it was a mad revelation. And you, it was just that you had an incident in jail. Um, I think you've done a video about it as well, about when um, someone tried to hot water you. But as usual, I go off by myself. I get myself into trouble. I troubled someone. I got myself moved off the wing, just me alone. I've got put on this wing that I don't know as many people, but I know one person, and he's already got his like group there, his little thing. I've come down eating amongst them. We're playing COD. It's one of them them shows where you can have a console and over social you can all be up in there. Mm. Association is the time to associate. You come up for an hour. I'm there. Uh, something's gone missing. USB stick now one thing i'll say is like i say stealing but i literally stopped stealing from beyblade days <laughs> you understand like from bw days from when me and sir getting grabbed and that it didn't become stealing after that it became like 
I just call it stealing because it wasn't mine, in it. Mm. It's not mine, in it. I've taken it. So I started taking. I started, um, and in this case, uh, uh, a USB has been stolen. So it already it doesn't fool under me mm. in my remit, in my head, because I didn't need to justify anything to anyone else. It was yeah. just about what I cared about, and I, I went through a phase of. I don't know what to call when you start thinking you're literally that guy. Or, I don't know what yeah. to call that. Like, some grandiose behavior. Like, mm. I'm just literally, yeah. Um, I didn't do it. In my head, I don't need to prove nothing to you. So when they came and asked me, they're like, yo, a stick's gone missing. You've bounced out the cell. Someone there talking, my, must have been talking my name after I've left the cell. Because literally, I've just left it. Because by that point, I'm like eight did, years did, into my did, sentence. Did you have the stick? No. Okay. On my, on my whole freedom. Like, yeah. let them make me start that again. Like, if I'm lying. That's how deep it is. Mm. But I got questions so much about it because, like, I don't know who's convinced the person whose stuff has gone missing that I'm, like, I'm about that life. But, yeah, he asked me one too many times. And because I was, like, he asked me in public, like, as well, like, he asked me, like, tried to literally grow me down in public and asked me, like, yo, my things are missing. Man, I keep telling me it's you. I'm like, bro, you asked me three times. You know what? I did do it. What? And I, I'm now I didn't even do it. On oh, God, I yeah. didn't do it. I'm saying to him, bro, what? I done it, bro. So what? What's, what's your problem? And then now everyone's going, ooh. Mm. You get it? He's like standing there. You get it? He's looking at me. His face is going red. You get it? <laughs> so I'm like, what do you want me to do, bro? You keep asking me, really. but I done it, bro. What's good? And he, he wasn't on nothing. He left. You get it? They all left. There was like six of them that approached me, just me standing there. So it was like two days, I'm coming, I'm eating my food. Now I'm a bit more vigilant because I'm aware I've said something to him and yeah. I've not heard from him since. Yeah. So um, I'm eating food. It's one of them, them times where you can eat. F- it's them jobs where you can eat food, like, yeah. but you don't have to be behind your door. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm out, I'm eating my food. I've gone to my friend's house. My house. I was there so long. You get it. I have to, now I'm calling my room cell sometimes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going through that procedure. I've gone there and... I'm eating my food in my bridge and so I f- it's dark though. So I know someone's entered the cell when I felt a piece of light a bit more. I made mm. me turn it back around. Yeah. I've turned back around, I'm seeing the youth faced with a, with a kettle. Mm. It's boiling as well. I said, my man, I'm going to get it, bro. This is for me. Mm. I already know what I've said to him two days ago. I'm like, what are you saying? What are you, what are you trying to do with that big man? And he, mm. <laughs> he both, I've, I've gone for him. You get it? I went for him. Yeah. Again, on God, I went for him on my bird. I don't know why, but in my head, I wanted to knock it out of his hand. That's how it went in my head. I, let me just knock it out of his hand. I've gone through with my left. He swung it. And yeah, he's caught me. But if I didn't do what I'd done, he would have caught my whole thing. Yeah. So he just caught my left side. Yeah, he's given me a f- things to be conscious for. And we've started fighting, yeah. slipping up and down. I'm with the henchy sheet on the, in, the, in the, the wing. This guy's freezing, glitching. I'm saying to him, bro, can't you see what's going on, bro? He's like, tell him, bro, you're on your bed. Get up, bro. Did you he's, tell me? You're not yeah, to he's like he's looking at me like he's all frozen because he could obviously see what's happening to my face, and mm. that's just obviously shocked him. He get all right, cool. So then we're fighting, but we're rattling against the door, boom, because it's it's open, it's not locked. So like you could hear the boom, boom. He get screws. I've come to the door to the noise. People have come to tend to the noise, but I think a scouse has come to the door before the skate. The jakes have come, and he stopped the fight. He's like he knows me. He's like to me, bro, like, look at your face, bruv. Like, don't don't go after him. So I've looked in the mirror briefly for a second. He's he's gone into the landing. He had a little like thing on him as well, but it didn't do nothing mm-hmm. as well. So cut a long story short, he's on the landing. I don't know what he's waiting for, what he's on. But I'm just, I looked into the mirror briefly. I've seen my face. That's all I needed to see. And I followed him onto the landing and it spilled out onto there. I see an old man that was mopping. He saw God bless him. I took the mop. And we just, yeah, we just like that, a little fisty cuffs and stuff like that. But the more I started realizing that I'd been it, I ended up going into shock. Mm. And the next minute I woke up, I was in Queen's Elizabeth Hospital in Birmingham. This is where they take all the soldiers that have been hit up with IEDs or, you know, on God, bruv, like I'm there, I'm, and I'm bun up and that. You get it? I literally feel like I've been through one of the levels of hell and shit. Like, mm. it's no doubt. I was fucked. My, half my face was Michael and half was me. So that is a permanently scarred, you know? Permanently, because my skin wouldn't heal. Mm. And I had to have operations well, and you, all you sorts. Did you put sugar in it? Um, 
I heard it was my photo still. I d- well, now oil. we don't know because like we they think it's my like oil because we it didn't um it wasn't healing. Mm. You understand? It was literally oh, burnt wow. to it burnt to the it burnt to the nerve. It, the nerves was dead. Wow. Mm. So uh, how did you feel after that? Butters, but I thought, am I gonna like draw girls again? Already, like I'm thinking, but yeah, like. Yeah, or what my mum think. Let me be honest. Let you see, I, I can make everything a joke and this way from it. That's why I'm literally, I've done the counselling and all sorts of stuff like that. But yeah, I was thinking about my family. The, by that point there, you've had enough visits to know that they're the really the ones that's got you in it. Mm-hmm. Like, like the 50 friends become five. You understand? You've got five, 30 friends that are visiting you, sending you the postals. The rest maybe try to fuck your girl. Yeah, the I'm, gonna say, I'm, gonna say, uh, I'm gonna talk about that. Like, in regards to when you was in jail, did you feel that you had much support from your friends and family? Were they supportive, or was it like you said, like everyone was there, and all of a sudden you don't see any faces? You're calling people, they're not picking up. Um, I had the support where I needed it. No, no one can. I've had this conversation with so many people. People be like, "Oh, you, you went at my, or whatever not." But what I'll say is like again that the revelations or those cliches like the. They affect people differently, innit? Like, I was the one that got that sentence. I didn't realise I was playing that game. You understand? Like, it was playing out to me. Mm. And suddenly, I'm I'm here doing a, like an L play. You know, you, you're, you what you're doing, it doesn't matter to me. I, don't put, I mm. saw I was living a different life. You're on road, and I'm in this life for at least 10. You understand? Yeah. So I, I didn't... I didn't, I didn't, I didn't want to, I was focused on more getting my decal. I was having those kind of dreams yeah. now. I was just, yeah, cool, I'm playing this game now. I was having dreams about, like, going to open prison and stuff like that, mm. instead of, like, being at this party or that. And I was like that until I started realising there is more life after this. And I needed to dream mm. about, I don't know, having a normal life one day or having, um, having a, you know, having what like i saw like having what was taken from me so in terms of um your parole then when you was rejected the first time did you think oh, i'm never getting out of here um yeah because i had this hard of hearing attitude you get mm. um it was i literally believed that i could get out with as least change as possible mm. You understand in it, it like something showed me that it wasn't it, it wasn't gonna be like that something and it was through major it was through setbacks it was through the parole knockbacks it was through the basic so much basic that i done it was through me banging out for this guy and then he's not banging out for me like once he gets the drop and it's like i never ask questions i never have done i never used to be like oh why did he this like mm. and, you know and once i started doing it I didn't have a care for it no more. It was like, uh I mean, that's one thing people, you, you mentioned something like banging out for someone and then back. That's one thing I always found intriguing about prison, especially when I was in sort of young offenders, is that literally, like, if you've got the drop on someone, everyone that's not on the wing are expecting you to have done something. Yeah. And if you don't do it, you're, do you think that peer pressure is so intense more so than it is on the outside? I'm going to show you a situation that, because if anything, I had to ask myself, if this kind of character went in, how, how did that come out? And mm. that situation, that very same situation that we just spoke about, mm. all right, it happened. Let's say, like, I was in hospital for so long that by the time I came back, the person that done that thing was gone. Mm. You understand? One, it was bait. Like, you go the screws, like, and you get it was on the door, everything. I did nothing. I didn't put no charges on my man. Mm. They came to me. They asked me. If you want to do this or do that, it doesn't matter to me, bro. Like, my face mattered to me, my body mattered to me, my family mattered to me at that point there. I just needed to heal. So I fucked him off, fucked all that off. By the time I came back to the Nick, he was gone. Mm. So that's cool. I got, it gave me time to heal, to get over it, to, like, focus, which I did. It literally is. It gave me time to get onto the next course I got on, which was Resolve. Imagine that same year that happened, I had... Um, parole for DCAT, open prison, my first okay. like application for it. Because I was a minor, I get entitled to, to um, you know, at, half, at a certain stage, I can apply for, for open prison yeah. if I've been good. But mm-hmm. obviously, it was a dream by then. By that point, I've done eight months of good behaviour or something. I thought like, yeah, I'm good. But they needed more, man. So I've gone for that. I failed. Um, that happened to me, though. 
Do you know what I'm trying to say? And I had to do a course called Resolve. They wanted me to work on instrumental violence. Imagine they sentenced me to that and they gave me everything that I had to do at my sentence plan, mm. which is that same year. Mm. A sentence plan is like, all right, you got this sentence. You're going to be here with us for a long time. But for you to get out and lower your risk, we want you to do this course or this course or this mm. course. And I didn't have many to do because I wasn't a career criminal. I yeah. didn't keep going to prison. Like, this was my first sentence in prison, like, and I'm here. Mm. You get? So I had, like, three courses. And I had done two of them by that point. So I'm thinking I'm really in a good start, chance mm. of getting it. And then they're telling me, no, nah, you want me to look at the reason why you love violence or using weapons and stuff like that. In the, and it's called instrumental violence. Mm. And they gave me resolve to do. So I'd done it. And you know, it was enlightening. Mm. Helicopter view and that. Like, I look at things from like, yeah. yeah. So, so, I, so it worked out in the end and really. Yeah, it did, it did, it did, it did. Uh, it gave me, and it opened more doors. Like now CCAT want to work with me. Mm. They want to like, yeah, you can come to CCAT or this is CCAT, we do this course here, or we've got a life as wing for you. You can come in and just mm. like do 18 months and have no IEPs or no bad behavior. Yeah. You can go home, you mm. get. But, like talking about lifers, um, how was it to of being with other lifers who got so much more time to go? Like, um, how, how, how did you guys bond and talk about these things? I know you also enjoy with Crazy Titch, right? My guy, yeah, 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 yeah. Free up Titch, man. Even though he's from like, again, I told you about the blessing of being from like that generation. Yeah, yeah you get it. Like, so go there. Like, I've seen guys from gate. Yeah, I've seen guys from like certain weird areas that didn't exist before I went to prison. Mm. And it's like, I see them and it's like, oh gosh, like, yo, they even some of them call me my government and that, like, mm. yeah, like, yo, like, hug up and like, yo, it's, oh, it's sad. And we have that little speech, like, it's, 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 I'm all, like, it's just sad, like, what's happened? Do you get it? And, but it's never been that energy for me. Anything that's happened, that like, it's been people that I don't know, it's people that have come after, mm. people that have got points to prove or think they have or going through that stage that I was just speaking about at the beginning of this. You know, they're going through that, ain't it? No one can't tell them nothing. I can't really hear it. So if it has gone sour, it's because, it's because I couldn't get through to them. You get it? And tell did them that, yo, it? we don't know each other. We're not on the same things and that. Did you see any of their life as a breakdown? Or did everyone just put in a brave face? Some, yeah, of course. Some people didn't. And I did. How about that, bro? Like, like, let me be one of the imperfect ones. I wasn't, like, always, like happy with, with my situation. Remember, those click when I'm playing like Uncle Murder and I'm playing GTA Saints Row, all these silly things and stuff like that, I'm thinking it's based off of things, you know? I'm based off of realness, like, and when I'm acting it, I'm doing it, I'm channeling it, I'm, in, you know, embodying like, just, just, just the, just the playing out scheme of things. Um, I literally believe this forever. I can do this. This is my friends. All of these guys that I'm doing, I'm sh that I'm doing it for. They're coming to gonna be at my wedding. We would have grown out of it. It's gonna be like you know that real husbands of Hollywood or something. Mm. Yeah, we used to be like this and that. We're chilling out and all that. Nah, man. It's yeah. I don't know what program I was watching, but that's. So when I'm in there, and um, like I'm having bereavements as well, you know, like by then, like. While I'm in here, my, my whole, where I'm growing up, all this thing is just burning. Mm. It's just going downhill to pot. I'm hearing so much stories. Some people, innocence are getting caught. Cool. I've had like crazy incidents, mm. you know, and I, to not be able to give yourself that mantle of not having a dad and being the provider and to not be there to, to every time you hear a problem, that was me. You know what I mean? Like, people call it people pleasing or whatever you want to call it, but people had a problem. Or people had, like, you was unhappy. Look at my drawing. Oh, you're bored. Listen to my music. Mm. Oh, like, you need someone to go and steal Beyblades with you. I'll come here with you. Mm. Yeah, you know what I'm trying to say? Oh, what? He touched you and he didn't do nothing. I bought you. Let's go. Where is he? You mm. get, like, and for it to be for nothing and you're doing all this and your mom's cried this much or this has happened or you've lost this person over it now since and this and, and it's like, Oh, or you're seeing people that you have had this mentality for and they haven't got it. Because mm. not everyone's the same. And to think that everyone's the same and you realise they're not, it was like like wrestling when you get, you, hear, you know, like, oh, shit, wrestling. Like, you get it all over again. What do you mean that sound is like, like, whatever, like, I don't know, man. It's just boring. It was jarring. It was deflating. It was, yeah. And 
yeah, it was just sad. So you done just um, under fourteen in there, and you've come out. How much has the world changed since you left it? You just have been busy. You just have enjoyed yourselves, man. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. You guys have the, the fashion, like everything's changed, like yeah, and it the game is still kind of the same. Mm. You understand? There's still there's still if there's a game to be played, there's rules. That's all it is. There's 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 all of these things that come with it. And I just I lacked that awareness as a child. That, you know, I just felt like going in there, it allowed me the time to kind of sit back and look and think, all right, this has happened, but what what can come from this, what it is and stuff like that that can kind of let make it less of a blow or of a shock when you do encounter that first smartphone that they give you. Mm. Or whatever, because I went Joe. I had a Walkman, bro. So I don't know if you know. Sony Walkman. Ah, my my brother. I had the the, the white and orange one. Mm. You get. Then I had the K seven fifty i I can name them because these are. This is yet my yesterday. Mm. For you guys, it'll be a bit. Like, so many new memories have happened. But mm. I could just be like, Yo, K seven fifty i Hollow Meets Blade was popping. Mm. This and that was happening. You get this and that. Like. So you're kind of still stuck in that. Um, I'm not stuck. Not, it, not stuck in that way, yeah. but your your. It, like, it's like a moment frozen in time. Yeah. Mm. De- some DeLorean business, like yeah. some like Back to the Future business. Like, because I n- always knew I'll be coming back to it, but I never forget that I come from that. Do you know what I'm trying to say? And that's what stopped me from wanting or having a, a, a desire for what um, I encounter today as much. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't need to make a name or to come out or to be like, or to jump on this, 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 whatever, whatever it is I hear about. I don't need to, cause I just see it for what it is, isn't it? So what are the kind of challenges for you now? How are you navigating life? What are the struggles or what are your plans? Um, so, yeah, like, you, I came up, obviously, you know, like, the kind of sentence that I've done requires, like, a license as well to kind of counter it. So I'm outside, I'm managing my license. Um, I'm, because of the age I went into, I was in touch with, like, social services, all of these kind of things. Mm. I was, I, I needed, cause I didn't do the DCAT thing as well. That's another thing. You see, I was telling you, I dreamt about DCAT. Mm. I didn't even end up going there. Okay. They released man from CCAT. Do you know what I'm trying to mm. say? Which was, which was good. And it could be, it showed that it could be done. Do you know what I'm trying to say for me? Um, I didn't have no fear, like, like things of sconding risk or anything like that. It was just more beneficial for me to come out. They put me on tag and they put me in like a, a area where there's like access to bell hostels. Yeah. At first, they put me in a bell host. Actually, it was a specific one for lifers. It was in Catford. So I'm up in there. I'm, I'm doing it for like I've done my tag time there, but I'm still. My family, they still live in Newham. Like people still live. Like I still got ties to Newham. You yeah. understand? And it wasn't before long that I got a phone call saying like, oh, yo, come meet me in Ilford. Mm. But for me to pass those areas, I have to pass Newham. Do you understand? Mm. Like from where I was anyway, in South London, I don't think I could ha- uh, access Ilford through some, from, from some other route. So I thought I, I was being smart by just like taking cab in it. So I've gone to take a cab and I've gone to meet someone and I'm not aware of my license. I'm not aware like what they literally mean by the word recall. Mm. Like they give you a seven bullet points, but there's so much more that can go into it. So many loopholes where they can think, I'll oh, raise your, your, your risk and yeah. sentence you and say, or recall you, which is what happened. I was with someone that was known to police. He was stopped and searched and he happened to have like a serious, you know what I mean? Something. Mm. And yeah, I was stopped and searched in the car and they let me go, which is the snakiness of it. But then I got a letter saying that they wanted my, my recall. So I ended up going back for seven months into the nick once I came out. I mean, when, when you first was going back in, did you, did you think, oh, I'm going in for a long time again? Or did you kind of know that it might not be that long? Um, I knew that I wouldn't be staying for too long because I generally did the right thing by not going with like my I, I went in a in a cab behind. Do you understand? Mm. So I was I was yeah moving like that. 
when we got stopped and the the cab was intercepted, I, the bad luck was it was in you. Mm. You understand? So that's what, like, what was you doing there kind of thing, do you know? And when I'm saying that I have to cross through to go probation, because I'm, I'm from there, I'm still going um, probation there, and I, I have to pass these places. Um, if I get stopped and and this this guy in another vehicle is being like that, it's it's nothing to do with me. So I've had a uh, what do they call it? It's on paper the hearing, mm -hmm. and they 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 after 28 days I knew that I was staying a bit longer, but it took seven months for me to get out after the recall. Oh, that's mad. So now you're out, fresh home. You're adjusting to life. What's the plans for the future? What can we look forward to for you? Well, it's a very, it's a very one because like I've mentioned so many things that I'm good at throughout like this, throughout my time with you. Mm. Um, I want to get back to just being like the freedom to create my art again. Mm. Um, so since I've, I've been home, I've been working alongside a lot of black mentors. I've been working alongside a lot of people because a lot of people have taken off, man. I, I don't need to say like who I've grown mm. up around or who I've been, who have been about. Mm. A lot of people have become masters of what of, of of their own craft and stuff like that, and that's all I'm trying to do. And right now, I haven't got much to speak on except for my experience, or of, of which was incarceration, which was. Mm, like the the toxic masculinity aspect of, of yeah. being a man, you know, trying to reclaim it through all these like disdainful acts and that I was mm. doing, come from the lack of my dad and the entrance of someone that you know, like I come from an African culture. The the man that entered my mom's life was from a another culture. Yeah, you understand. So it was like as well. It was just just. Yeah, how to find out how to navigate through this world with, with those chips on your shoulders that like you've gone through. Like you said, you've seen a lot of people in there that that haven't come home. They could be home now, you understand? I was also one of them, you understand? I, like, rest in peace, like, slew you as well. Like... Yeah, I'm big up. You're my man. I was, yeah, I'm just... I was just tired of... I was I was tired I was tired of hearing those kind of stories. Like you know the funny thing with Reese is I known him since he was a kid. I remember we used to call him Doki. <laughs> him and Kevin just mess around. And who's the third <laughs> one I used to get them? It was me. Because yeah. Shoma Shoma, like mm. don't don't but like I know the like you know what? Like it, it just it's just a sad situation for so many reasons, isn't it? Mm. And that for me that was the that was everyone's got there and it was for me it was big man. You know the fact that I didn't get to as well to kind of see the, the stuff that you that, that everyone saw mm. the man that you go into. I, I I hadn't seen him since he was maybe nine years old, and then I see him at a party. I think it was called your funds and my brother and made his party done like, done like a joint birthday party, and I see someone looking at me and I'm looking at him, but we're looking at each other, but no one's saying anything. Yeah. And I was like, maybe he wants to come over. Like, That's Reese, man. I'm like, Reese. He's like, ah, oh, I thought it was you, Bob. And literally, two days later, we, we took a photo. We took a photo that I still have now. And then two days later, that's when he was killed. No. Two days later, literally. I didn't see him since he was like nine years old before that. And Kevin. So I knew Kevin and Reese from just being young guys in Cannon Town, guys yeah. in my family there. But I never knew them to become these bad boys that they were. I So the, what image I had of them was just like little naughty boys in the local area just messing around, playing football, running around with their bikes. They were not able to tell me, nah, what? Kevin and Reese, they're madmen now. I'm like, since when? Like, it's mad. So then, like, literally, I hadn't seen him for years. And then two days after seeing him, get the news that he, he was killed. And because I, I, I come around here a lot, um, even the hospital that he went to was around here. It's crazy. It's crazy. Rest in peace, man. Rest in peace. It's just like, yeah, man. And even the big brother, as you know, the whole, everyone, like, like, CK, mm. so many people, like, have changed, like, have, have done things for me. I just feel like, once I, once I saw it done, once I saw people, like, because not everyone went to prison and stayed in prison, stayed in that kind of life or something like that. Mm. If there's a way to do it, like, and for me also, I just, 
yeah, why not? Because if I, I had this awareness, I do now, and a lot of the choices would be m more constructive, more with a, with a gain, more with an end result. And with the people that you kind of used to par with back in the day, now that you're out, is it a thing that way you're back in touch or you're still kind of keeping your distance? I fulfilled the requirements of my license. Like, mm. I'm not in contact with anyone more that I need to be or anything. I'm just going to be staying steady, releasing content slowly, check my page um, for, for, for latest drops. We've actually got something coming like next week. Um, yeah, and I need to find a way, an exhibition, like link me up for the exhibitions, man. Let's see some art from that was created from the, the, the House of Pain itself. No, say no more, man. Say no more, man. And that there, guys, was another big ego interview. And that there was a story of Caps.